The following program includes graphic images and mature subject matter intended for adult audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. There is an expression that justice delayed is justice denied. And it's how a Canadian teenager feels after DNA evidence vital to her sexual assault case was left unprocessed for years. It's a delay that some say is far too common. And now that half of the RCMP's forensic labs are closing, there are concerns those wait times will only get worse. Here's Sean O'Shea. Ripped underwear, a blood-stained hoodie, a discarded top. It's the scene of a violent sexual assault. Each item holds forensic biological evidence, DNA, that when analyzed in a forensic lab, has the power to convict or exonerate. Nanaimo, BC. This is where we meet a young woman we'll call Jane. My mom dragged me, literally. She packed my boxes for me. As a teen, Jane moved from her hometown of Nanaimo to a city surrounded by wilderness on the edge of the Arctic, Yellowknife. Once I got there, I hated my life. I didn't want to go anywhere. I hated the town. I just, every day I asked my mom, can I go back to Nanaimo? Can I go back to Nanaimo? But she wouldn't let me because I was only 17. I was just pretty reserved and quiet, unsure of myself, kind of weird. Never had a boyfriend, never been kissed. <laughs> Jane decided it was time to come out of her shell, explore her new town, and she hoped meet some friends. I was pretty much walking around, trying to see the stores and get a, an idea of where to go, just wandering by myself. She happened upon a few guys hanging around outside a convenience store. I started talking to them, and they said that they were going to hang out at a park with their girlfriends. And if I wanted to tag along, there would be some girls to meet um, and make some friends. It was August. It was pretty sunny, nice little breeze going through the trees. Kind of reminded me of Nanaimo. That sort of felt like home almost. But by dusk, the girls the young men promised to bring out to the park still hadn't arrived. Jane became uneasy. They started asking me, have you kissed a guy? Do you uh, give blowjobs? They drank 50% vodka. And I tried a sip of it, but one of the guys held the bottle to my mouth, and I was forced to drink a whole bunch of it. It's hard to recognize exactly what happened because of the vodka. It was dark enough that I needed to go. I could still sort of see the path, and I could still see a bit of moonlight from the trees. I could see my way out of the park. I just didn't want to be drunk and in the dark in a new town and not know how to get home. But the men weren't going to let her go that easily. I kept walking, but somebody grabbed me. I don't really remember much after that. Clothes torn from her body. Jane was beaten, raped, and left lying in a bloody heap. They punched me until I was unconscious. And I was a virgin, and they ripped me from the inside out. I have flashbacks in my nightmares. So consciously, I don't really remember most of it, but it's there. In a sexual assault, the victim's body becomes the crime scene. I had scrapes and cuts and bruises from head to toe. The cops, they took pictures of it all. I had to go to the hospital to do a rape kit. Swabbed for semen, scoured for foreign hairs, any piece of biological evidence, DNA, that could identify a suspect. Well, it actually hurt. I was a virgin before those guys did that. And they were bigger and older than me. So I was pretty injured. The hospital handed the sexual assault kit over to the Yellowknife RCMP. 
Well, they said that they were going to process the rape kit, and they said that they would give me a call when they had a DNA match or if they had made an arrest. Sexual assault kits collected by police are sent to forensic labs for testing. But for unknown reasons, the police didn't do that in Jane's case. Instead, the kit containing crucial criminal evidence languished in the Yellowknife RCMP detachment, not for weeks or even months, but for more than four years. Rick Woodburn is the president of the Canadian Association of Crown Counsel. What's the value of DNA when it comes to trying to get a conviction when you're prosecuting a case? How important is that? Uh, DNA these days is, is a cornerstone of any uh, criminal prosecution uh, and any investigation for the police. It's been used more and more over the years. It's been validated. So it's a cornerstone for uh, every criminal prosecution. This is a staple. It certainly is. Any kind of DNA uh, can either exonerate uh, or uh, aid in the investigation of any case. Police brought in suspects in Jane's rape investigation, but with key evidence from her sexual assault case sitting untested, they didn't have enough to lay charges. They were questioned and released. I just didn't know that even having the rape kit done, they still got away with it. Fearing for her safety, her rapist still in the streets, Jane fled Yellowknife and returned to Nanaimo, alone and just a teen. About four months after I got back to Nanaimo, I phoned up there and I just asked what was going on and they said it hadn't been processed. Next, 16 by 9 goes inside an RCMP lab to investigate Canada's evidence backlog. I've been emotionally scarred and physically disfigured as a result of this crime. This is by far the worst possible event in my life, as well as the most pain I've ever felt. I was raped of my virginity after being knocked unconscious. Jane would have to wait a long time after a scarring sexual assault before she'd get to share those words in court. The DNA found on her body languished in a Yellowknife RCMP detachment. For four years, police failed to send the sexual assault kit to a forensic lab for testing. No evidence. No charges laid. Nothing happened. I've had suicidal thoughts many times, but also feel that if I follow through with them, that they will get away with what they did to me. Pain followed Jane around like a shadow while her evidence sat untested with RCMP investigators. Jane's story is not, according to Rick Woodburn, the president of the Canadian Association of Crown Counsel, an isolated case. The delay is a big part of the problem uh, with the confidence in the justice system. I see it with victims of crime when I do a homicide. Why is it taking two years? Uh, when a rape victim has to go to a preliminary inquiry on one year and then wait an entire another year uh, in order to go to trial. Why is this taking so long? Well, there's a systematic breakdown. Police put Jane's case in limbo. Other cases get held up here. It takes 40 to 60 days before most evidence is tested at one of six RCMP forensic labs. Bad enough. But in Jane's case, it took five months. And in some cases, it's even longer. Hey, Malcolm Sean O'Shea. Hi, I'm Malcolm Goodfriend, general manager of the lab. Inside the RCMP lab in Ottawa, evidence collected is analyzed by forensic experts. A lot of people don't come in here who aren't part of the RCMP or law enforcement. No, it's, uh, it's a restricted area due to the fact that we're dealing with actual uh, evidence from uh, criminal matters. So we're getting an inside look? Yes, you are. Very much so. Forensic scientists here do highly specialized work. Ballistics, explosives, counterfeit currency, and DNA the linchpin of criminal cases. It is painstakingly precise and slow work. 
Now, forensic science must move slowly. That's one of our other challenges because everything we're doing has to be accepted uh, in the courts and has to be proven. So there's a large amount of uh, scientific scrutiny. I'd expect nothing less than the work we're doing to be uh, impeccable. That exacting process means evidence testing takes time, time that ironically could defeat the purpose of gathering the evidence in the first place. As scrutiny is applied to each scrap of cloth or piece of hair, the backlog builds up. Evidence waiting in a lineup that can be months long. You add this delay to all the other systemic problems that we're already facing in our court systems, this is one more added thing to that delay, one more thing that can push it beyond where a case can be uh, dismissed uh, because somebody has a constitutional right to have a speedy trial. The risk of having a case dismissed is one of the reasons police are opting to send forensic evidence to private labs for faster processing. The drawback of the private lab is the cost. I can tell you from two different cases, one was $40,000 for the DNA, the other one was $30,000. It's quite expensive. But who ultimately pays if you have to spend more to go to a private lab? The public does. Evidence piling up, money paid to private labs coming out of the public purse. Despite those costs, the RCMP is now closing three of its six forensic labs. Thanks very much for meeting with us. My pleasure. 16 by 9 met with Chief Superintendent Reg Trudell, Director General of RCMP Forensic Services. Trudell said the RCMP is working to fix delays flagged by the Auditor General. The auditors had said in two different reports that the delays were unacceptably long. We had delays for DNA up to 140, perhaps 180 days, which is a very long period of time. To have zero backlog would mean that we have too many employees. So it's normal to have a backlog, but it has to be a backlog that is manageable. A backlog represents those numbers of cases that are not hitting the time target. That's correct, yes. In an email to 16 by 9, the Yellowknife RCMP admitted that mistakes were made in the case of Jane, resulting in an unusual delay and that the RCMP now has an improved system for supervision and tracking of exhibits. Trudell says the target now at RCMP labs is for a 40-day turnaround. We're doing our best through process improvement, through implementation of new uh, workflow uh, to, to get as close to this 40 days as we can. I'm hopeful that we're going to be able to get there. The RCMP hasn't reached that goal yet. The average turnaround time is still almost two months. But Trudell insists closing labs won't mean a longer wait time. This is not a reduction in service, but it's a realignment of the resources that we have, and we're hoping we'll gain, we'll gain efficiency. Trudell told us the labs are closing because the federal government is insisting the RCMP cut its budget by 5 to 10 percent. If you weren't asked to try to save money, would you have closed those labs? It really does make sense to close those labs. I'm confident that we'll be able to be more efficient, meet an increase in demand uh, with the use of technology and uh, workflow. Rick Woodburn doesn't buy that shutting half the RCMP labs will make evidence processing more efficient. From what I hear from frontline prosecutors and police and, and technicians, uh, it has no choice but to be longer. In uh, cases coming to trial, uh, it's going to take uh, longer to get our samples back from the various labs, um, and that has a lot of consequences. For Jane and her wait for justice, the consequence was an emotional one. I mean, yeah, it was five years. You know, I was moving on with my life, and I was almost kind of over the wait. And then all of a sudden, it came back up in my face. Out of the blue, she got a knock at the door. And the Nanaimo RCMP came to my house and asked me for my ID to see who I was. And then he subpoenaed me. Jane traveled back to Yellowknife to testify against her rapist. I clammed up. My airways felt really tight. Uh, I started shaking. I couldn't really look in his direction. I started hyperventilating. The only reason he was there was because his DNA was in the rape kit. It took more than four years for the RCMP to move Jane's sexual assault kit from the Yellowknife detachment to the RCMP lab. It took five months to process the DNA at the lab. After all the delays, 
It took only seven days to find a match in the National DNA Data Bank. On September 26, 2007, six years after the attack, John Philip Koizan was sentenced to four years for sexually assaulting Jane. After so much time, Jane finally got justice, but she has yet to find peace. Sometimes I see people that look like one of those guys and I have a panic attack because I think it might be them. I think they might have found me here in Nanaimo. I think it's gonna happen all over again.